to Brother Fred. Tonight, I want to talk about godly relationships. And godly relationships uh, are, of course, personal relationships and relationships with our strong personal relationships, even uh, uh, casual acquaintances. Uh, these are the kinds of relationships we're talking about. But uh, for them to be godly relationships that we have to receive from God himself. And, and so it starts with God. Uh, godly relationships start with God and our relationship with him and what we receive from him. John uh, chapter 3 verse 27 says we have nothing except what we receive from heaven. Uh, that's pretty important. And so if you uh, see uh, difficulty with uh, relationships and how people are relating to you, then go ahead and, and uh, look at your relationship with the Lord and, and what you're drawing from him, that's what you have to give out to others. And, and if you're not drawing from the Lord, then you don't have anything to give out to, to other people. First uh, Corinthians four said, what do you have that you haven't received? Well, if you haven't received it, you, you don't have anything. Jesus said in John 15, three, 15, five, uh, I'm the vine, you're the branches. And apart from me, you can do nothing. Uh, so we've got to have that relationship with the Lord. And what we're going to look at today are basically three groups of disciples that were deceived because I don't want any of you to be deceived. I don't want to be deceived. I'm really concerned about this concept of, of deception and for us not to be deceived. And for us not to be deceived, we have to know what our relationship is with the Lord. And uh, the thing about uh, a relationship with the Lord, it's measurable. Uh, we need to be able to measure it. And, and where these people got uh, deceived was that uh, they had no clue about the strength of their relationship with the Lord. Uh, they considered everything to be okay when it was not okay. And, and so we need to know, and, and it's measurable. For example, in uh, 1 John uh, 4 verses 19, beginning verse 19, it talks about if we love God, uh, if we say we love God whom we do not see, how, how can we hate our brothers and sisters that we do see? And, and so it is measurable. And so our love for God is measurable and it's not going to show up in hate uh, for our brothers and sisters. And so we need to know how to measure our relationship with the Lord. And I want to start with uh, the Laodiceans, mm -hmm. chapter uh, three of Revelation. Um, these were people that thought everything was good. They said in, in verse 17, you say that you are rich and you increase in goods and need nothing. But Jesus said, I say, I, said, I want you to see there's a difference between what they say and what Jesus says, Jesus said, you are wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked. You, you say we are rich <laughs> and, and increased with goods and need nothing. But I say you are wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked. So we don't want to get so far away from what Jesus says about us what Jesus thinks about us. They were deceived. These people were, were badly deceived. And so we're starting with uh, our relationship with God and how to measure it. And I want you to think in terms of a scale of zero to 10. How do you rate your uh, relationship with God? It ought to be measurable. A and you might say, well, there, there's no such scale as that. Well, well Jesus has such a scale. In verse 16, uh, zero is cold, 10 is hot. <laughs> and he said, you're, you're not hot and you're not cold. Whoa, you are you lukewarm, lukewarm and I'm going to spew you, you out, out of, of my, my mouth. mouth. So there is such a scale. It's either cold or hot, zero or 10. Where are you? Or maybe you're 10 parts hot or maybe nine parts hot or maybe eight parts hot or seven or six or five or wherever, you, you, we need to know. These people were deceived. They didn't know uh, where they stood on Jesus's scale. Jesus has a scale. 
And we need to be able to measure where our relationship with God. And I'm going to show you three groups of disciples that had absolutely no clue where they stood on Jesus's scale, hot or cold. And we don't want to be lukewarm and spewed out. Uh, and so be thinking about these. And I, I don't want you to tell me where your relationship is. I, I want you to communicate with the Lord and, mm. and find out where your relationship is. First, no, 2 Peter uh, 1.10 says this. He says, if you're sure of your situation, of your calling and election, then you have an entrance into the kingdom of God. You have a portal into the kingdom of God. Your portal is the surety that you have about your relationship with the Lord. If you're sure about your relationship with the Lord, then you can enter the kingdom and you can enter the presence of God and you can bring the kingdom onto the earth. You can bring the kingdom, which is the dominion of God, where he rules into your finances, yeah, into, your, into your marriage, into your relationships into your family. It, see, if you know where you stand with him, you can enter into the kingdom, bring the kingdom and the realm of God and the Holy Spirit uh, and where his dominion, uh, where he has dominion into your situation. But it's only when you're sure. See, if you're not sure, then you have no portal. You have no entrance into it if you're not sure where you stand. But but Peter's saying you've got to be sure about what your situation is, what you're calling, what your election is. You've got to be sure about these things, and then you have the entrance into the kingdom. Uh, don't you want to have that portal? Uh, and you, you get that portal into the kingdom by being sure of your situation. So let's go back to the Laodiceans. They, they thought they were rich. They said they were rich. They uh, had need of nothing. But now let's look at Jesus. Jesus said, I'm not going to kick you to the curb. He didn't <laughs> use those words. But we, I would look at them and say, oh, they must have been hopeless, a hopeless situation. But, uh -huh. but they were not hopeless. Let's th think about what Jesus said, how they were to deal with their situation. He said, come yes, and, and exchange exchanged. some things with me. Woo! Glory! So the first point I want to talk about is making some exchanges. Changes. Are you making any exchanges? See, he, wants, he wanted to uh, make some exchanges with the Laodiceans. Uh, he wanted them to buy from him gold, gold. that was refined in, in the, the fire. fire. Amen. And also he wanted them to buy white garments, yes, white rainbow. Yes, yes, uh, righteousness. And, and he wanted them to buy from him eye salve so they could put on their eyes and see. Okay, so now what's, what is tried in the fire? Well, that's our faith. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Okay, so this is pretty exciting. And even yes, though they were, even though they were lukewarm and they were far from being hot uh, and they were in uh, they were in danger of being spewed out of mm -hmm. Jesus's mouth. See, mm -hmm. deception about your relationship with the with the Lord is the greatest deception, and it's the most dangerous. It's the most mm -hmm. dangerous for you not to know where you actually stand with the Lord. And the Laodiceans had no clue where they were, but the Lord still was drawing them unto Him, and He wanted to make some exchanges. So. What kind of exchanges can we make with the Lord? Well, we can give him our depression and our anxiety. Yes, amen. And our sickness and our poverty. And, and, and we can get from him glory to God. Hallelujah. Peace and joy and mercy and grace. We can, we've got to make some exchanges. Have you gone to the Lord and made some exchanges lately? You need to on a continuing basis. Amen, uh, amen. You, you need to... to, to Look at your situation and evaluate it. You know, we're told to examine our faith. Yes, examine ourselves. Again. Examine your situation. Examine your faith. Examine yourself to see whether or not you right. are in, in the, the faith. faith. We want to examine 
ourself? Are we going to examine with a, a critical eye, looking at the reality of the situation? Are we going to just accept deception? The Laodiceans were deceived. They had no clue where they stood or how to move from where they are. See, the deception, if you're deceived, you're paralyzed Ooh, from Lord. moving on Ooh, with the Lord. Ooh, you, right. You've got to know where you are and where to go and how to get there. And so that's what we're talking about tonight is about not being deceived, that we need to evaluate ourselves. Uh, and uh, I don't need to be evaluating you and you don't need to be evaluating me. It, it, the scripture is clear. It says, examine yourself and, and we need to know where we are. But if we never, if we never examine ourselves, we don't know uh, if we need to make any adjustments, many, any changes. Uh, are we hot? Are we cold? Mm, are mm. we nine pots, parts hot? hot? Are we eight parts hot? How hot are we? Are we one part hot? We, we need to know where we are. We need to know where we, where God wants us to go and how to get there. Well, the exchanges, beginning exchanges, finding out, asking. It's by the Holy Spirit. You only know because I'm talking about supernatural things, but I'm making them very practical tonight. And you might say, well, this is abstract. No, I'm making it practical. I'm taking something that is supernatural and I'm bringing it down into the natural realm so we can measure where we are and look at our situation and make some plans uh, and strategies uh, to improve our situation and our relationship with the Lord I mean. because it's our relationship with the Lord that is going to determine the relationships with other people. Yes, I mean. It amen. all flows out of the Lord and out of our relationship with the Lord. And, and we don't have any godly relationships down here if, if we don't have a spiritual Spirit relationship relations with, with the Lord. It, it flows out of him. What do you have that you haven't received from heaven? You have nothing. That's what uh, the book of John said, John 3, 27. You have nothing that you haven't received from heaven. Well, that's important to know right there, mm -hmm. that, that what we have to give to other people is going to come from our relationship with the Lord. Uh, this is a real important message. This is one that I want you to take mm. to heart and, and make it practical in your life. Uh, how, uh, how do you stand with the Lord? We're told to examine our situation so that we'll be able to move freely into the realm of the kingdom, into the realm of the supernatural, uh, the realm of the Holy Spirit, and bring dominion and change our situation, change our relationships, change, uh, change um, our finances, change our marriage, change our home, uh, change our, our performance on the job, amen, change. Amen, 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 amen. But it's all going to flow from our relationship with the Lord. But if we're deceived about our relationship with the Lord, then we're, we don't have anything to, to give out down here. We, we need to know, first of all, it is what our relationship is, and then make the necessary exchanges with the Lord. He himself, is speaking to you and say, come unto me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. And I'll, I'll give you peace uh, for your turmoil. And I'll give you a joy uh, uh, mm. for mourning. And I, I, I'll give you garments of praise Woo, for, for the a spirit, spirit of heaviness. heaviness. There needs to be an exchange. Hallelujah. The, the world it just rubs off on you. The world begins to rub off on you and you, you, you can't get rid of those things. The only way you can get rid of them is to make an exchange Change. with the Lord. And so this has to be an ongoing process. You, you need to know that you can go into the presence of the Lord. You have a portal, an entrance Hallelujah. into the kingdom of God and into his presence because you're sure about his, your relationship with him. And when you're sure of your relationship with him, you can enter into that realm where he is and, and, and you can commune with him and you can exchange uh, the things that the world has uh, 
put on you and, and, and rubbed off on you and you can exchange those things, unforgiveness and bitterness and, and, and all of those kinds of things, the things that hold you back and weight you down, you can exchange those for peace and joy and the fruit of the spirit and, and righteousness. You can walk in righteousness and it doesn't matter if the world has uh, stolen your goods. It's how you're going to respond to those kinds of things. You, you come to the Lord and you lay them at his feet and, and he will give you his joy uh, yes, and amen, mercy amen. And, and peace Hallelujah. and grace Hallelujah. for the time of trouble in the time of trouble yes, time of need, yes, yes. he will give you grace and mercy for those times and that's wonderful now there's a there's another group that's deceived and that's the Corinthians a group of disciples mm -hmm. and uh uh, I'm looking at 1 Corinthians chapter 4. I'm, I'm thinking about this, 1 Corinthians 4, and we'll begin in 8, and, and the Corinthians say, oh, we're full, <laughs> we're, we're rich, we reign oh, as no. king. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> we have it all. We don't need anything. We, we've got it all. And um, Paul wrote, oh, I wish... I wish you uh, oh, were. Oh, I wish you were. <laughs> I wish you did rule. <laughs> I wish you did rule. <laughs> Hallelujah. I wish you did rule. See, you say, you say, I'm full and I'm rich and I'm, I reign as king. But Paul says, I say, I wish, how I wish you were mm -hmm. uh, full and rich and, and reigning on the earth. But then he gets down to a place. He says, you've got a lot of instructors, multitudes of instructors, mm -hmm. and they're telling you about Christ, but you don't have many fathers. That's right. You don't have many fathers who will reproduce Christ within you. See, there's a difference between instructors mm -hmm. and fathers. Mm -hmm. And so the, these, uh, these people in uh, Corinth, uh, they had been they had been listening to a lot of instructors and a lot of people that that really uh, given them enticing words, and and they've been going out and doing all kinds of things. You look at what the Corinthians were doing; they were doing a lot of uh, really wild things, and and uh, and they re really didn't have the kind of relationship with with the Lord that they claimed to have. They were deceived. This was a deceived group, and, and Paul really nailed it when he when he talked about you've been listening to all these instructors multitudes of instructors now they may have been talking to you about christ but you don't have many fathers and it's going to take some fathers it's going to take a father there's a father for every person here on the earth every person on the earth god has a spiritual father for you and that person will help bring forth Christ within you. It's a difference uh, between talking about Christ, telling you about Christ, and forming Christ within you. And, and see, we know from Galatians 4, 19, this is what a father does. Uh, Paul said, he, I, I'm a father. Yes, yes. I'm a father. Uh, and and uh, he said to the Galatians, he wrote to them, he said, I'm, I've been in travailing and yes, birth yes, yes. until Christ be, be formed in, in you. you. So that's the difference between an instructor and a father. Uh, a father is going to reproduce Christ within you. Uh, and so you might say, oh, I, 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 but I love my pastor, but I love this person and I love to listen to this person and I love to listen to that person. Are, are they explaining Christ to you? Are they are bringing forth Christ within, within you? you? Are they forming Christ within oh, you? That's, that's what good. a father that's does. Good. A father, see, has that reproductive wow. seed, seed, that life within him, that life force within Shun him to form seed. Christ within you. We need fathers Hallelujah. on this earth we need to relate to spiritual fathers. And, and I know you all will say, well, but Jesus said, call no man a father. I'm talking about the fathering process or a person that has the seed of life in him to form Christ in you. Mm -hmm. Paul said, I travail in birth again till Christ be formed, formed in, in you. you. Hallelujah. The Corinthians were deceived. And he said, uh, then and they after, stayed in the carnal realm. They 
ha had all kinds of gifts operating in. Let's just think about mm -hmm. the Corinthian mm -hmm. church. These were the ones that he had to write letters to about how to use the how to use the gifts. So yes. the gifts were flowing in them. Yes. But, but they didn't they didn't see the order of things and how to use the the gifts and so there are people popping up here and there and doing all kinds of things all kinds of things out of order and, and paul had to bring order into this situation so it's not that they were unfamiliar with spiritual gifts they needed to understand god's way of doing things and that's where the father brought uh, mm. brought correction into the corinthian church uh, in several different ways but he said uh, he wrote to them in the first Corinthians 12 one, he said, now the things of the supernatural realm there, these are complex, uh, but, and often misunderstood, but I want you to be knowledgeable of these things. Uh -huh. I'm, I'm quoting from the, from the uh, passion translation. I want you to be knowledgeable. You're, you're not to be un, uneducated and unlearned about uh, spiritual things. They are complex and often misunderstood, uh, but I'm here to bring you in, into the reality of the way God wants to operate these gifts. And that's pretty exciting. And, and then in uh, 1 Corinthians 4, as he's writing this letter to the Corinthians, and he's explaining to them that they're not really at the point they think they are. Uh, they may, on that scale of uh, zero to 10, they, they would probably have rated themselves as 10, saying, oh, we're, we're raining or we're raining, but he said, you, you've been listening to too many voices and, and you need fathers in you that are going to bring forth Christ within you. And then he said in the next verse, uh, be an imitator of me, mm. be an mm. imitator of me. You look at what Paul's doing. He said, because I'm following Christ. And so you can follow me. You, you might not see exactly what Christ is doing, but you can see me and you can see what I'm saying and what I'm doing. You follow me, you be an imitator of me. And that's what we need to do. We need to have fathers that, that we're going to set an example for us and that we can follow them and follow their example and teach what the, that we've been taught and, and do what we've seen done. And, and uh, that, that's what what Paul was about. He was, he was bringing people up in Christ, uh, forming Christ within them, releasing Christ uh, so that, uh, you, you know, sometimes we want God to do things to fix our problems, but a lot of times God wants to use you uh, to operate through you so that Christ can touch other people through you I mean, uh, I mean. so that you can be his mouth on the earth and you can be his hands on the earth and he, he's using you christ is operating through you that's that's what what we need to be looking at as our as our goal uh, not just for him to 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 fix our problems uh, now i realize when we're first born again we, we'll ask the lord to uh, to fix our problems and he's gracious and he'll do it but after a time there's a time that he wants to operate through us uh, to, for us to have his perspective and to speak to the storms and to lay hands on the sick and see mm -hmm. them recover and, and to, for him to operate through us because he's coming alive in us. So it's not just about us sitting here and asking him to fix our problems because there's no examination of faith. There's no measure of our faith if we're just sitting here and asking him to fix all of our problems. We never we never take any responsibility of anything, but he's saying, examine your faith. How are you going to examine your faith if you, you don't have any faith and you never exercise any mm -hmm. faith? How can you examine it? Well, we need to look from his perspective and, and see what needs to be done and fulfill purpose. See, Sherry and I are about connecting people with, with their purpose, purpose. I mean. connecting people with their purpose. You need to be fulfilling your purpose. If you're just here on the earth, just getting by, you, you're taking up breath uh, that, that ought to be used by somebody that's going to move mountains, that's going to change things. Hallelujah. Because you are Hallelujah. a change agent uh, on this earth. God put you here uh, for a purpose to, to fulfill uh, your destiny. You have a destiny and, and it's fulfilling the purpose. As you discover those purposes, then you begin to walk in that and fulfill your destiny. 
Now, I've said there's three groups. Well, we talked about the Laodiceans, and then I also talked about the Corinthians. And what, what the Corinthians needed, of course, was for Christ to be formed in them and to have relationships with people that will bring forth the Christ within them. There's another group, and this are, are the disciples of Jesus. And, and this is in John 16 I'm talking about from from uh, verse 27 on through 33. And, and uh, so Jesus is telling his disciples, of course, he hasn't gone to the cross yet, but, but he's told them that he's come down from heaven and that he's, he, he's going to go back to heaven. And he's told them a lot of things. And, and the disciples say this, uh, oh, now we know. We, we know that you've come from heaven. We know, and, and we know you know what you're talking about. And, and we know, and now we believe. You have, you've been talking to us in parables, but now you're talking plain. See, it's getting down close to, to the crucifixion. He knows he's moving towards the cross. And, and so he's telling some things very plainly. And, the, and they're saying, oh, yes, now we know. Now we know. Now we believe. And this is Jesus' response to them. So now you believe. Well, you're going to be scattered. You're, you, you think I, I, I'm the one that's come down from heaven. I've told you all of that. And, and you, yes, everything that I've, I've said to you, now you believe, but, but you're going to be scattered. You're going to leave me. You're going to go to your own home. You, you're going to, you're going to go in your own way. But, yeah. and although you will uh, uh, desert me, they need, although you're going to be scattered away from me, I am not alone for the father is with me. Hallelujah. Now, I've spoken these things to you that, you will have peace. Look at this. This is what Jesus is going to give them. And, and in the world, be of good cheer, for mm -hmm. I have overcome the world. So what he's saying here. In the world, you're going to have tribulation. In the world, you're going to have tribulation. You're going to have tests. And, and so this is what the Lord showed me. If we want to look at our relationship with the Lord we measure it by how we do with tests down here on the earth. Amen. And it's not his test. It's the test uh, about uh -huh. the relationships of the people that we're around. It, it's those people that are around us and, and the things that they do. How do we respond to those tests? And, and see, if we pass those tests, mm. then, then that's a reflection of our relationship with the Lord. And let me give you some oh, examples. yeah. Okay, yeah. so there's some... <laughs> Let's say there's some people around you and they say some uh, evil things about you and say some lies about you, even lies behind your back. Well, okay, so mm -hmm. the issue to pass the test is what's going to be your response? What's going to be your response when people tell lies about you, when people persecute you, when uh, uh, people... Um, distract your friends away mm, from you and, mm, and you thought oh this is a good mm, friend mm, and i've really poured a lot into this life and and i believe this is a close relationship and 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 somebody gets them and and, and moves them off see that's the way the the wolf the wolves do do with the sheep that they try to get off get somebody off and so what if they do that uh, and get some of your friends and they take you the wrong take them the wrong way or or they go back to the drugs or they go back uh, to alcohol or they go back in another situation. So what is going to be your response to these situations? And, and, and I thought about, you know, I'm tested. I'm tested every day, every week. Uh, and, and what people say and do. And how am I going to respond to that? Am I going to take an offense uh, if they say something about me, if they say something about Sherry, am I going to be offended by that? Am I going to take an offense by that? Or am I going to keep my cool? Am I going to keep my peace and my joy? Mm -hmm. and I, and I pass the test, see, when, when I keep my joy. Uh, James, Hallelujah. James said, Hallelujah. Uh, count it all joy. Joy, count so, it all so, joy. So you think about all the evil things that happened this last week. Uh, in your life, all the evil things that other people did uh, in your life, and and I want you to think about a piece of paper with two columns, and one on one side of it, uh, we'll, we'll put a joy, and, and the other side we'll put not joy. We'll say all of these evil things that they, that I, I can be joyful about them, and all these things over here on the other side that we'll say not joy. Not joyful. Uh, okay, so. Uh, if you've got some things over here on this uh, side that says not joyful about these things, 
then you haven't passed that test because James says, count it all joy. So all the, every evil thing that happened to you this past week, you need to count it as joy. And so it all needs to be over here in this category. Hallelujah. I count, I count it as joy. Might not have might not have been joyful, but I count it. I count it as joy. I count it as joy. I put it in the category of joy because I keep my joy. Woo! What are we gonna do? Or am I gonna be in turmoil? Or am I gonna be uh uh anxious about things, or I'm gonna be fearful about things, or I'm gonna be upset about things? Then then I'd put all those things in the in the not, not, joy. not joyful uh, category. And, and if anything at the end of the week shows up in the not joyful category, then I failed that test. But don't worry about it. If you fail the test, don't worry about it because you get to repeat it next week. <laughs> that, that's, a, that's the thing about all of these. Oh, dear Jesus. All, these, all the testers here coming in your personal relationships and the, <laughs> and the people that you're around and and uh, you, you get to you get to keep going over going over these tests over and over again until you pass them. And the way you pass them is they all move over into the joy category. You keep them, and you count it all joy. That's what Paul. I, I mean, that's what James said. Count it all joy when you fall into diverse uh, temptations and t tests and trials. Just count it all joy. Well, it may not. It may may have been evil. It may it may have just been terrible. Maybe we should just consider it to be terrible. But he said, "Count it all joy." You can't keep your joy in in, in the midst of everything. See, it, they may steal your goods, but if they if, but if they don't steal your joy, they can't keep your goods. Hallelujah! It's important to keep your joy, keep your peace, keep it. Don't don't let what other people say or do steal your joy steal your peace don't let them do it don't don't lay there at night worrying about what people are going to do or say uh, or think tomorrow make sure that whatever they do you keep it in the joy count the column that, that you count it all joy because if it, you don't count it all joy you get to go through that test again and, and we, we want to get through those tests and, and as long as we can count them all joy then they're over here in the joy co column we're keeping our joy then they can't steal our goods. Or they can't keep things away from us. They can't keep us awake at night. Uh, they can't uh, uh, make us uh, have an ulcer. Uh, they can't. <laughs> they can't uh, cause us to have a high blood pressure if we keep Woo! it all in the joy category. So I've tried to make things very practical tonight. And what we're really interested in is measuring our relationship with the Lord. But a lot of times we measure it down here in our test with other people because that's where the tests and trials are going to come is how people interact with us are we going to be offended by what they do are we going to be anxious about what they do or are we going to count it all joy that's what james hallelujah. said hallelujah. hallelujah and so this how do you build godly relationships then have a strong relationship with the lord and then you have a father a, a spiritual father that's going to bring forth Christ within you, form Christ within you. And then as you have tests, you experience tests in your relationships, you're going to overcome those. You're going to keep them all in the joy column. You're all in the joy column and you, you're going to be at peace at night. You can lay down, and put you your head on the pillow sleep. and have a good sleep because you've got godly relationships that, that are built in heaven because you don't have anything that you haven't received from heaven. That's what John 3, 27 says. So I want you to have godly relationships and I don't want you to be deceived. I've given you a scale of zero uh, to, to 10. 10, a scale, how to rate yourself. Jesus is rating yourself. You say, well, what did I say? Oh no, he's not rating me. Yes, he is. Hot or cold, <laughs> hot or cold, hot or cold. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. And are you are you passing the test down here? Hallelujah. Are you passing the test? Are they in the joy column or in the not so much joy? Hallelujah. 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 Okay, I'll stop. Well, now I know that it was outstanding. Um, now I know why Psalm 16 says that in the presence of the Lord there is fullness of joy. That's where we get our joy. That's where we fill up our container. Hallelujah so that we can respond the way the Lord wants us to respond to every situation, to all the, the evil that's going on in the world uh, and that joy that we can keep all the things on that joy side is because we've been in the presence of the Lord. 
and that is building our relationship with uh with with the father and and with our daddy and just uh loving on him and and then he imparts that joy to us that joy the strength of the lord uh that that comes uh with that the the joy of the lord is our strength and so that's that's how how we uh, can can overcome every situation and every bad word that's spoken about us or anything evil that the 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 enemy tries to do to us you know with our family with our uh you know the people that we uh meet and and interact with every day uh this is this is where we can build up our our joy container and um and so we're going to 